Welcome back to Bridging the Gap. We're here with the new Madison Parks Director, and this is Seth Pennington. It's wonderful to have you here, Seth. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And I hear that you've not only grown up here, but you moved away and came back. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm initially from Madison. Um, grew up here most of my life. Was involved in basketball, baseball, a number of things through the parks, through the high school. Um, then from college standpoint, ended up at Franklin College for about a year. Played some basketball there for a little bit and was involved in some things there. Uh, and then from Franklin, transferred to IEPY. Um, had the opportunity to have a job throughout college that really worked out there. So ended up being an IU graduate technically and kind of lived in Indianapolis for several years and had the ability to do some really cool things and kind of got called back to Madison and um, it's been a good move and we're excited to be here. Oh wow, I think, I think everybody's glad to see you came back. That's I hope a, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are so. But now by being gone for a while, you had some life experiences that are going to help you in what you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, initially when I came into college and I'm working in Indianapolis, I actually worked in the Indiana Senate for a while. Um, that to a lot of folks really sounds more like a more political job than it is. No. Um, you really get your eyes open to a lot of what goes on in our state and operations and how that works. Uh, one of the kind of committees I guess that I got to work on and kind of serve as a liaison for was the Department of Natural Resources Committee which overall of all of our state parks and things so I really had an in-depth look at how state parks operate, what the parks operations are, um, kind of looking at their business model, the structure of how that you know they really kind of had a restructuring in the past few years and the way they do a lot of things and it's been really interesting at the time that I was in the parks system there per se that I got to see how that operated some of the directions that they went we had an overall evaluation I could see what worked what didn't work right um, so that was really exciting then from there moved more into the private sector a little bit um, kind of found my niche in organizational development leadership uh, business development so did that for a number of years for some different places um, what I kind of is prided on in my career a little bit was really taking an organization that uh, maybe wasn't to the fullest potential yet and being able to help build that up and leave it in a good spot whenever I decided to move on to the next opportunity. So it's something I've enjoyed and something we always look forward to. Well, I'm sure all those experiences are going to make what you're going to do now it, much easier because you're going to know where the resources absolutely. are that you need. So. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the biggest thing of having worked in a different area for some time, it's really allowed me to kind of develop my network and have some folks even in this community because Madison is a community that you stay connected so well with folks here and yeah. you know you leave but you never really feel like you're gone in the same sense because you've got so many folks here that are keeping you kind of up to date with what's <laughs> going on or what you're missing so and you, you get come the, back pretty often absolutely so. you do yeah. I, I spent a good amount of my weekends coming back here and uh, yeah it's it's really good in that sense and I do take a lot of the folks that I met in Indianapolis and a lot of the connections that I made there networking wise and they've been extremely helpful to me already and you know when I'm looking at contracts and what we do or what direction we might go I just make a quick phone call to some other parks directors and folks that I worked with in the past and say hey what are you guys doing what's worked how do you measure it what didn't work for you and it's been extremely helpful that you know I'm not I'm new to this obviously but I'm also in a position that I've got a lot of great help and I'm not in the position that I have to reinvent the wheel that I'm able to take structures that are in place and I'm able to kind of use that utilize it and then build from that so and well that brings us to the direction of the of the Madison Parks Department with all those experiences you've had and the resources mm -hmm. now you're able to take the Madison Parks Department into into the future direction yeah absolutely um, just being in the Indianapolis area you know there are a lot of great park systems around there you've got the Carmel Clay Park System which is above and beyond a lot of what's in the country the same with the Westfield Park System and a number of others in that area having the opportunity to be in a vicinity of living in them or living near them you really get to see what a full-blown parks operation looks like and something okay. to strive for and Mayor Courtney and I have talked about it over time uh, in the past few weeks that you know we know that those are on a different scale than what maybe Madison looks like and the population differences and things are obviously there and we recognize that but I think the goal for us as a park system is how do we become best in class when we compare Madison to some other counties or cities that you look like right. that are like us um, I think with that we're really looking to mirror ourselves after those larger communities and try to figure out how do we take that park system and how do we do that on a little bit of a smaller scale uh, one of the big things for us is we want to move to a more online friendly portal for folks that mm -hmm. when you're doing reservations you're doing signups it doesn't require you to come down here to try to leave work early and things of that nature that you'll be able to go online you'll be able to take care of that you'll also be able to check scores 
of events, um, I think that will also make it easier with our media folks in the community that yes, we well. won't have to send that out and there won't be something that you know we have to make sure that we're on top of. You guys will just have the ability to go <laughs> check that, which I think is a win-win for everybody. It is a win-win. Yes. We're not waiting for the information. Absolutely. It just pops up there and it's ready to go. Yep, absolutely. So there's a lot of really cool capabilities. It also makes us as a Parks Department, I think, much more transparent at the end of the day and it gives us that capability to be. I think at the end of the day it will allow us from a budget standpoint, operations standpoint, that we can really track everything that's going on and we can really narrow it down in that system. And then at the end of the day I can run reports and I can give them out and I can say, you know, look, here's exactly where money went. This is exactly what we use man hours on, things like that. Right. Um, not to say that the parks hasn't been doing that. They have. Um, obviously, I think everybody knows that. This just really gives us the ability to do it in a little bit better fashion. Just as we continue to move into more technological right. world, we kind of move with that. Um, some other parts of the parks that we're really looking to move forward to is we want to really create a more complex park system. And what I mean by that is, you know, I'm somebody who I've grown up in athletics and things like that, but you know, not everybody is into athletics and right. that's not for everybody. And I think we really want to try to make the parks extremely inclusive in our community of, you know, we have youth, we have the adults, and then we have our senior population. We want to try to find programming for all those folks that we can really increase upon and we can offer. I think there's some things and just having the ability again to live in those areas and kind of be in some different park settings. You can see the programming that's gone on there and I think we can very easily mimic that here. And it's something that we're going to strive toward. Um, the other part of that is we really want to make sure that when we're striving to be best in class that the beautification and you know the maintenance side of things with our parks are something we put a big focus on. Right. Uh, with that we really want to move towards going after these grants to one make sure that we can continue to build on some things but also if there's some work on our parks that need done that we can maybe explore some grant options to help improve that um, and then over time I think the whole goal for everybody is you know figuring out what that main goal is I think we at City Hall kind of have some thoughts on the direction we want to go but I think over time we also want to work with the community to you know say if you are in that active senior population what are you looking for what draws you to something what draws right. you to an event um, you know, and with that said, we also have identified that there's some things maybe in our parks that in the past that we put in place and I think we wait for folks to come to us. Um, we would really like to find a way to take the parks to some of our communities. And what I mean by that is we have some areas that, you know, maybe there are kids over the summer and things that transportation is not an option. How do we set up shop in their community or in their neighborhood, whether it be on the hilltop or downtown? or anywhere within the surrounding distance that we can get to and how do we put a little summer camp or a program in place for them that we can take that to right. them give them the ability to come over you know right outside their front door back door and participate in that um, we know it's going to take work and we know it's going to take plenty of time um, and sometimes some things take funds but I think we're fortunately we're in a community where folks are willing to help and if that's anything I've learned is everybody here is always seems like they're willing to help which yeah. is something that it drew us back to this community right. too is you kind of lose that when you get into some larger communities sometimes and Madison close knitness yes, is gone absolutely and Madison is very unique in that aspect mm -hmm. so it's something that we we look forward to we know again it's going to be a challenge and we know there's going to be growing pains at times um, things are going to look different they're going to be different in the way that they operate um, but we're always very open to talk to people too you know if we put a process in place and maybe and we're not always right we're going to be wrong and we know that so if we are wrong, we're happy to talk about it and we're always happy to improve our process and figure it out. I can always guarantee people that when we do make those decisions that there's a lot of thought that goes into things. Right. Um, there's been a lot of conversations in the past few weeks alone that we've spent countless hours in City Hall just kind of going to the you know brimstone saying, hey, what do we need to do? What's the fiscal impact look like? What is the quality of life impact here? A number of things. So. It's not always the quick and easy decisions that are made. They're long, they're drawn out, and right. there are some people that are working hard over there. I told my wife the other day that, you know, this is my re-entry to the public sector per se. And I've been in the private sector and it's no knock on the private sector. I was like, but I have not worked this hard in a while. <laughs> I was like, this is this is it's, a different ball game. It's so, intense, yeah. Yep, but it's been good and we're looking yeah. forward to it. Well now, with back to the numbers that you're keeping and to keep track of, the income and outgo of everything that's really important for the grant side of it now the yes the parks department kept that but not in as great detail as you're going to keep now mm -hmm. so maybe explain to people why that's so important for those grants to work because without yeah. it 
the parks department is going to be suffering. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when it comes to grants, it's really all about detail. It's uh, when you do a grant, you can't have very large ballpark numbers. Most of the time you have to break it down to some very, very detailed numbers to mm -hmm. say, here is exactly the need. Um, it's kind of the expectation that, you know, sponsors have at times, which is if I hand you a hundred dollars, I want to know exactly what it goes to mm -hmm. and I want to know what my benefit and return is. And that's exactly what grants need. And that's exactly what we have to do over time. And when you apply for a grant, typically you've won, you've got to have that information ahead of time, which is extremely valuable to us. And that's why those scanning systems and things that are potentially going in place in the number and record keeping will be valuable. But it's also valuable in, you know, the aftermath of once we have the grant, we are still responsible to some things and we still have to make sure that we provide that to them. Right. Um, I think the biggest thing is I think our community would be able to go to several of our parks and identify the need. Um, the problem being is that we have to be able to measure it to say here is the need and we've measured it so here is it on paper and in data form that that is our problem. Um, once we have that we're able to explore a lot of different grants. Um, we're hoping to be able to do that in the near future. Grant processes take time and they take work and energy. It takes a very very special person to be able to do that. Um, it does. They've got to be, know. you know, we always look at when I look for somebody who's done grants in the past any, you know, excellent writing skills, which is obviously there. You look for sometimes for somebody with a sales background because you are selling something. Yes. You're selling your problem to somebody with money at the end yes, of the day. And exactly. we're always trying to do that. And that's, it's very important from that aspect. I think the numbers are also very important just to make us a better department at the end of the day. It allows us to really show taxpayers exactly what's going on behind the scenes. It alleviates any question anyone may have. Um, it makes us a complete open door. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we have been an open door in the past, but I think this really allows me that if I get a question on, well, you know, where did this go or how did that work? I have it right there that I can say this dollar amount right. went to this exactly, um, or we spent this dollar amount on this, you know, exact product. And those are things that as we continue to build out our budget and things, that data is also extremely helpful that we'll have that at hand and we can say, this is the real need here. And then if there's not that need that we may thought there was in the past, we can take that and we can allocate it into some different areas that can maybe right. help us improve and grow as a park system. That is wonderful. So now with all this re rearranging things and restructuring, yeah. you've got events that are going to be coming up, actually sports. So how is that going to work? The, the timeline for the applications and the deadlines and all that? Absolutely. So we're actually actively taking applications for our, let's say, boys baseball, girls softball mm -hmm. leagues, and that is going until June 5th. So if folks are interested, I recommend that they call the parks office. They can get their application in. You can go online and you can find that at the Madison uh, hyphen, uh, what is it? Madison hyphen in dot gov. I have to think about that one sometimes. You can go there and it can be found under the parks department page. They can print that off. They can drop it in our night box that is outside of the Brown gym. They can also come to the Brown gym and collect one. Um, they'll also here shortly be able to come to city hall and collect that as we move our operations. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are operating that, and I know we're a little different than some communities. Some communities have chosen not to play. Um, we've really taken a strong look at what ours can look like and how we can operate it safely. Um, that's the biggest thing that I always want to emphasize to everybody is we're not taking anything lightly, and by playing, we're not excusing anything. We're really taking a lot of precautions up there. We're following CDC guidelines. We're following the governor's back on track Indiana plan mm -hmm. as well to make sure that we're abiding by both, you know, federal and state standards when we do these. Right. Um, and we're having a lot of internal conversations on what are our standards from a city standpoint. So in doing that, what the complex will look like this year is going to be a little bit different than maybe what it's been in the past. There's going to be some staggered start times. You know, groups of kids may play on a different day of the week than they have in the past. There might be some fields that are utilized that maybe the traditionally that kid hasn't played on or that group hasn't played on. Right. Trying to get the best use of our facilities. Um, we'll also be able to really have to limit capacity. So one of the biggest things that we emphasize to folks as we approach our what is technically our start date when we can do rec league practices and things, which will be that June 14th, June 15th date in there. Mm -hmm. so we really recommend the folks, if you're not necessary to that child's travel to be at that game, that we do ask that you try to refrain from coming. We understand that that's hard and we know that everybody wants to be a part of that. And they can always take turns. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you can, you know, grandma and grandpa can drive, mom and dad or whoever can. Right. Um, and that's really where we're getting to with some of the spectator side is we are limited in capacity. Social distancing will also right. still be a thing and will be prevalent. We're taking what we are calling our safe play guidelines. So we're trying to make sure that we're doing adequate distancing. We're also making sure that we take not only the spectators um, safety, our staff safety, right. but also the player safety. And what we're doing with that 
is one, we're going to eliminate bleachers and things out of the complex. Reason being is it's an area to gather and it you can, have to clean it. Exactly. And it could potentially hold a lot of germs there. So yeah. we're eliminating that. We're asking folks to bring in their own chairs or stand if they would like to. There's also some parking lot areas they may be able to watch from the car if they choose to. So that's we're pretty fortunate in the way the park is designed for that. Right. But we'll ask folks that when you do come that you space yourselves out, you stay within your household groups, things of that nature. But we'll also do from a safety standpoint for staff is we're going to instead of umpires, you know, predominantly being behind a catcher as most would be accustomed to, we're actually going to move that umpire out between the pitcher's mound and second base to call strikes from behind the pitcher's mound. It's something that I've kind of learned from my past just when you have maybe one coach at practice it's something that people are a little familiar with and it's what you do and you're yes. kind of instructing. So we do a little bit of that. It's going to be a little bit different look. Um, we're going to work with our umpires that we hire to make sure that they are trained and right. adequately ready to be in that kind of scenario there. They'll um, be used to the change exactly. by the time it starts. Exactly. We want to make sure that they know, especially if the ball's hit, where do you move, where do you line up, things like that. Trying to make it as enjoyable for everyone involved as possible and also make it that we're not just, you know, throwing our staff out there and they're like, well, what in the world is this? I'm not accustomed to this. So we want to make sure that everybody's ready to go. Um, we're doing that. From the other standpoint is, um, you know, the governor's office and the CDC have really yeah. asked that we not be sharing, you know, equipment, helmets, things oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. If folks are in need of equipment, we're fortunate that over the years a lot of folks have donated things to the Brown Gym. Right. So if you're in need of that, we're happy to always do that. It's, again, just contact us at the parks office. We're happy to help try to take care of anything we can. And if there is a need that is prevalent in the community, we're happy to go help try to find a sponsor for you or anything. There's a lot of giving folks in this community that I'm sure would be happy to help. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so plenty. Exactly. And we're looking to really make sure that our coach's responsibility will, one, to be make sure that kids are not sharing things in the dugout, whether it be mm -hmm. drinks, cups, making sure that we're spaced out whenever possible. Um, there's going to be a lot of little things in place and guidelines that we're not accustomed to when it comes to baseball or softball. But... We're going to get there and we're going to make sure that coaches are not only trained on these things, we're going to make sure staff are trained on these things and right. we'll make sure that our league administration has changed on this or trained on this. Sorry. That's it. Um, now with with all this, you got June 5th is going to be your end of date to sign up yes. to be in a sport. Do you have an end date for people to sign up to volunteer to help you? Is Absolutely there? not. Hey, okay, I was going to You say, can volunteer yeah, with us <laughs> anytime you like. The last day of the season you can volunteer. Absolutely. Still. If you want to come in so. and you want to help do something, you just call me at the parks office and I will find you something to do. <laughs> I'm I've sure got you plenty. Will. <laughs> so that is no problem at all for anybody. Well, I hope they I hope they call. You know, like you said, they can use any volunteer. Yes. However many number of hours you want to volunteer. So yes. you need to give Josh a call for that one. Yes. So with all this, you need good staff to help you with all this stuff. So you're actually looking to build your team. Absolutely. And what does that look like? What is your team that you're going to be needing? What does that look like? Yeah. At this very moment, we're actually in the next day here, we're going to be posting the assistant parks director role. And that is going to change a little bit from what it's looked like in the past. Um, what we're doing with that role is I really want to move that role to more of the administrative side and an operations side. Um, what I want that individual to maybe do is, again, exploring those grant opportunities. Oh, I want yeah. that person to be looking at additional programming that's out there and things traditionally as that role is done in the past. Um, but really having that job be one that if we have contracts and we have maintenance projects and things like that, that they're really helping keep a grasp on that and they're really helping things get running and making sure they're moving. Um, we think it's really vital that that role play a huge part of our development. Um, we want them in a strategic planning role. We want them in a build-out phase role when it comes to that. Um, we're really going to look towards, when it comes to our athletic programming and things, looking at some league directors and things that can really help do that. Right. Um, my role as the director and the assistant parks director role will still play a role in that, that if I'm needed to go to the complex one night to manage, we'll do that. The same is with that role, especially in the meantime this year. Um, as we continue to build our department a little bit, we're going to both be there and we'll be helping out on different capacities every single night. And that role um, will be required to do some of that. But in the future, as we build out, we really want it to be more of an operation side and more of a development side. And I really want that person who's in that role to be in my left ear all the time saying, hey, here's what we do to get better. Yes. Um, and then for me, you know, and I, I'm stuck with how do I do it? Um, that's kind of my job. I want that person to really be an ideas person really to be the person who says, this is out there, let's go after it. Even if it is the pie in the sky idea, I think that's what we're shooting for. We want to go for the unattainable and we'll land somewhere. Well, you never know exactly. until you ask or try. You don't know whether you can do that or not. So you exactly. need, yeah, you need to explore any idea. That's the goal. 
Awesome. So now the big giant question. <laughs> <laughs> we know y'all have this huge question. We've been waiting till the end for this. What is going to happen about the pool this summer? Crystal Beach is there. It's sitting there. Is it going to happen? Is it not? What What is going to happen with the pool? Yeah, that has been the looming question <laughs> since is, I walked into oh, the office. Yeah. Um, we've gotten a lot of phone calls and what we're for one, we are opening. So we're going to open June 15th is going to be our start date um, for the pool. Yes. I announced it in a parks board meeting last night. I think yes. Facebook got to it before our press release, yes. which I'm not upset about. That's always <laughs> helpful for us. And I appreciate that. Um, so it will be opening and with that opening like everything else It's going to have a different look than it has in right. the past and we let folks know that we were given guidelines again from the CDC from yes. the Department of Health um, out of Indianapolis or Indiana State Department of Health and, and some of that is the capacity Absolutely of the pool. It's not going to be what it was. Absolutely. So yeah, our well, they would call a bather load is what the guidelines say. So really the bather load at our pool is a little larger than most pools would recognize or have. Oh, wow. um, so we're at about, I think 50% of our bather load is around 500 people. And with current guidelines, we can't have 500 people in there and be able to adequately distance. So we are at this time going to have to abide by the 250 people capacity, which includes our staff. So you're really looking probably to about 240 patrons right. or customers that'll be able to come in per day. And we're going to really have a different approach to how we manage that. We're going to have different entry points and exit points that are really yeah. more or less just defined for folks. We don't want them with our locker rooms where there's a passing area and it's a confined space. We really want that to be that it's one entry, one exit, the mm -hmm. same as when you come outside. If there's a line here, we want to make sure that you're exiting the it's facilities in your own direction. Continue, yeah. Exactly. And there will be plenty of signage up. Um, you know, we'll encourage proper PPE and different things and distancing throughout the entire facility. Our staff will also be there to help do that. Mm -hmm. And what we will do is there's going to be sanitizing and cleaning going on throughout the entire day. There's going to be some things that we'll have signs on for folks. For example, the slide will be open. That's also been a big question I've got is, okay, is the pool opening? Are you operating the well, slide? Well, you have the water that's disinfecting running exactly. through the slide. So there's a, that's a little different than yep, exactly. a rail that yes. you're touching to go down. Yeah, the and the pool has rails going up. Those will be disinfected throughout the right. day. There's also a, a little grab bar to pull yourself and, I guess, kind of catapult yourself off. We'll probably have a sign up asking folks not to touch that this year. If they do, we'll also have staff up there with sanitizing equipment right. to make sure that we're adequately handing that. The same as when you line up for our concession stand, which will be open at the pool. You'll go in one way and there'll be an exit the other way. We'll make sure that we have the six foot markings in place. Yes. Um, we've got a lot of work to do to get it open, but we're excited about it. Our hours of operation are going to look a little bit different. Right. We're going to have a senior swim area that's going to be in the morning and then from the afternoon. I believe it will be 11 to 3 is the timeline that we're looking at that it will be open for what we'll call the first shift and then from that it will shut down for about 30 minutes we'll clear out the entire pool our staff will shut the doors they'll re basically re-sanitize the entire place make sure it's top to bottom cleaned again and it's going to be we know 30 minutes is not a lot of time so it's going to be a full staff effort right. and we're prepared for that so and then we'll open the doors back up and we'll have what we call the second shift come in Okay, so you got a capacity of 500. You're going to have 250 for so many hours. Stop for 30 minutes, clean the place, and then let 250 more come in. Exactly. Oh, that's perfect. Because I was thinking, what if, what <laughs> if this person buys a pass and they get there and it's always full? They'd be so irritated. Exactly. But if you're doing it that way, you're you're going to have that. Now, what about swimming lessons? How is mm -hmm. the, this going to affect swimming lessons this year? Yeah, swimming lessons are currently something to be determined. We're really trying to take a look, just given that guards would be really hands-on with the folks who are taking the That's lessons. True. And it's something that honestly at this time we're kind of waiting to see some guidelines out about. Um, we really like to be cautious when we're rolling out these plans, yes. especially being at the pool and different things. There's a lot going on, especially with swim lessons. Yes. And, and we're don't, also... You don't want to start them and then have to stop. Exactly. So. Exactly. And we're also at a point that we want to make sure that when we roll them out that it's adequate for everybody involved and that it is, it's worth the bang for their buck necessarily. Yes. The folks are asking us to do that, that we're providing an adequate service for them. So we want to make sure that what we are going to offer, which is kind of new to the pool, which I'm not sure if folks will be excited about or not. We're hoping they will. But in the evening, we're going to close the pool to what we, I guess, essentially is just our daily activity or operations. And we're going to have water polo and water volleyball leagues oh. available. So we will have that. Folks are welcome to call the parks office and we're going to kind of get that established. Right now, we're really just trying to gauge interest with folks and then we'll create our leagues and things based off that. So, oh, neat. yeah, so we're really trying to expand. Um, and I like to also just add that, you know, from 
not only the pool here in the coming weeks as we announce some different things that there's going to be a lot of additional programming coming out throughout the parks that are going to be a little maybe out of the realm of what some folks have done in the past and we hope that folks will take advantage of it and if they do then we'll continue to offer it and be at service and if not we'll keep trying till we find the right thing that somebody's <laughs> excited about so well yeah and you know like you said if they have an idea tell you absolutely because you don't know if it's going to be available or not unless unless you know about it you can't develop something if you don't know they want it so yep absolutely. you really need to make sure they do that so yes. now We've got the pool all taken care of. I'm <laughs> sure everybody's all excited about that part. So now, is there anything else we need to make sure they know? Um, yeah, absolutely. What we'd like folks to know is in order to contact us, what they'll need to look at, you can go to www.madison-in.gov. You can also reach us at 812-265-8308. We can be reached on Facebook now on our Parks Department page. That is a lot of place, um, or the place that will be center mm -hmm. for really all of our activity. And then you can also visit us now in City Hall. Um, we've actually moved our operations to City Hall. So if you're looking for us, that's where we'll be. Um, in the meantime, we will still have someone at the Brown Gym. But in the coming future here in probably the next few months, we will be in City Hall for good. Um, and that's a good change for us. So. Now, now, when he's talking about they'll be in City Hall, that he and Kim and the assistant director, they'll Absolutely. all be in City Hall. So you're going to be noticing that you're going to go to City Hall for a lot more things than going to different buildings for things. And I think that's wonderful yeah I just that makes things so much simpler yeah I think my you know my wife's a good example that she's from central Illinois initially and we moved here and uh, she went to go get our dog a dog park pass yes. and she went to City Hall and they're like you need to go to the Brown Gym and she called me and she's like what's a Brown Gym <laughs> I'm like uh, it's down the street so yeah. we're hoping that for folks that aren't necessarily familiar with the area and some of our tourists as well that yes. if they're looking for information that they can come visit us and we'll be there I, I think it's great. I, I like the way things are being organized more efficiently. So yeah. it's it's going to help a lot, I think. Yep, absolutely. And maybe more people will move here. Now. I hope so. We and that's can, kind of... We can always use more good people. Yeah, we use that from so, a park standpoint that, you yeah. know, quality of life really helps attract people. And if we do our job adequately, I think it helps everybody. You know, it, it draws people here for small businesses to be utilized, especially in a year like this. We really want to try to explore as much as we can, right. knowing that when a lot of things are closing and a lot of things are going to, you know, businesses are going to take a hit when we're not having these right. larger events. And my goal in this year is to really see how I, from a park standpoint, if at all, how can I make up that difference? How can I find that impact? that work with our local businesses and encourage people to go there after a game or get takeout from there, whatever is yes. feasible at the time. So Fill that void. Absolutely. And so that's, that's wonderful. Well, I'm so glad you came in today. Well, thank this you for having great. me. You're welcome. I appreciate it. And you're going to come back, right? That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be back, so he's going to keep you all in, informed and in everything that's going on. So the main thing you got to remember is June the 5th is the last day to get your applications in. So you can call, go online. Print it off off the website or go to the office and pick one up. So those of you that work, you can always call and they'll make sure one's either outside the door or somewhere where you can pick it up and bring it back. Yep. And then uh, you can go on the website and find out all the information that you need to know. So as always, we thank you for watching and we greatly appreciate our sponsors.